Hello everyone. Good to see you back for the second episode of the four part series on our new uh, IoT eSIM standard SGP32. If you missed the first part, we have the link of the first episode at the end of the video and in the description below as well. This video series has been brought to you by Simtech in collaboration with Concordant Research. Today we have a special guest Jean-Louis from uh, Keegan to talk about the technical aspects of SGP32 and how to navigate through multiple standards. Welcome to the show Jean-Louis. Uh, can you introduce Keegan uh, to, for our listeners as well as introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, Mohit. Thank you for having us on the, on your video. And uh, yes, Keegan is a SIM and eSIM service provider. We secure IoT with our solutions. And uh, I am responsible for sales in the EU and Americas. Okay. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, so my first question to you is that uh, are the new SGP32 standards backward compatible with the older eSIM solutions like SGP02? And the, can the devices using SGP302 uh, be migrated to SGP32? Yes, well, SGP.32 was designed to leverage the SGP.22 architecture. It's not backward compatible with SGP.02. So migration from 02 to 32 requires to physically change the SIMs, the eSIMs, and change the integration to the remote management system. The remote management system for 02 is the SMSR, for SGP.32 it's an EIM. So there's no easy migration. It is much easier to migrate from SGP.22 to SGP.32 because both rely on the same SGP.22 consumer architecture. That's based on an SMDP plus and based on a profile assistant, which manages the profile download from the SMDP plus. Both SGP.22 and SGP.32 can be remote managed by an EIM and can be implemented without installing software on the devices using a profile assistant in the physical eSIM itself. SGP02 devices cannot be migrated to 32. Does that mean that the SGP02 and SGP32 systems will operate in parallel in the end of life for SGP02 devices? <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It's a difficult situation, but yes, most likely, particularly for use cases in which the eSIM is hard to move or switch. When the eSIMs are soldered or when the devices are hard to reach, we expect them to stay on SGP.02 and for companies to launch in parallel new products with SGP.32 and keep them running until the SGP.02 devices are end of life. Yep. So if the, if the customers have to run the two systems in parallel, will it be better for them to move to the new standard at the earliest? However, the new standards are still not available. What should the customers do while they are waiting for SGP32 to become commercially available. Can SGP22 profiles be used in the meantime? And will they be compatible with SGP32? Well, customers can launch with SGP.22 eSIMs, uh, remote managed by an EIM, as long as that EIM is compatible with SGP.32. That way they will have the ability to migrate easily from 22 to 32. Realistically, however, if a company starts testing today, they will be able to launch with the full SGP.32 certified solution by the time they have reached their product validation. We expect certification in Q2 2025. So if you start your program now, most likely you'll be able to launch with 32. It is important for the EIM to be integrated with the rest of the connectivity solution. So in other words, uh, you need the CMP, the connectivity management platform to be integrated to the EIM to enable the remote management of the EYCC and to see what's happening in that uh, eSIM. So uh, you still have, you know, integration on the backend, which is required and then integration, of course, on the device level. Thanks for the overview on what the OEMs uh, uh, do till the time the new standards are available. Now shifting gears from OEMs to service providers, do connectivity providers have the backend infrastructure ready to support the new standard? 
Connectivity providers can be integrated in different ways to SGP.32. Right. Uh, they can either own their own e-sales and provide a complete solution, or they can simply allow for their profiles to be either preloaded or downloaded to eSIMs owned by other parties. So frankly, the integration into SGP.32 is a, is a question when uh, enterprises ask MNOs whether they support SGP.32, they should really be clear about whether they're just asking if their profiles can be preloaded. In most cases, MNOs would support that. Or if they want their profiles to be downloaded, in which case it might just mean a profile SKU that has to be created, or if they want a complete SGP.32 solution from the MNOs. And that will require some integrations for the MNOs to be ready and integrate to the EIMs themselves. So for connectivity providers to manage their own fleet, they have to connect the backend infrastructure to an EIM and define their eSIM configurations. The EIM API integration, the validation of the entire solution is going to take some time. But if they simply elect to have their profiles preloaded or downloaded, then in that case, they have to make their connectivity profiles available for distribution to IoT eSIMs, and they will validate. Keegan and uh, other EUMs will work with the MNOs to make sure that they are comfortable with the setup, can validate the EU ICCs, and that everything is working well for them. We have experience with SMTP Plus. We serve consumer devices, so the same SMTP Plus can be leveraged as well. So since the same STP, SMDP Plus and other eSIM infrastructure that uh, serves the consumers can be leveraged for IoT, some MVNOs or MNOs are already offering eSIMs based on SGP32. Should we adopt them now or could this create compatibility issues in the future? Well, it really depends which types of solution. <laughs> that's the that's a challenge, right? There. You are probably referring to solutions based on SGP.22. If they are based on 22, then as long as they rely on the SGP32 elements like EIM and IPAE, then you will have the uh, you will have compatibility. But you need to have the IPAE in the EUICC and then work with the EIM. Any other solution is likely to create compatibility issues or a situation a locking solution that has a proprietary remote management solution similar to what has been experienced with SGP.02 and for which SGP.32 was created to avoid these locking solutions. So we really recommend companies when they want to launch quickly to make sure that they use an EIM, that they use an IPAE in their eSIM from SGP.22. Otherwise, they're likely to stay locked in just like they were with SGP.02. That's it for today's episode. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information is there at the end of the video. Stay tuned for the next episode where we will continue to talk about the key questions surrounding SGP32. Thank you.